Story time. In the 90s, I hunted deer on the islands of the Mississippi River, between Minnesota and Wisconsin. While walking along one large, uninhabited island, I glanced up and saw a weathered, hand-carved wooden tiki-like face or mask in a tree branch, a good 10 to 15 feet above. It had an evil appearance, seemingly out of place in the middle of nowhere. My heart stopped. I managed to climb up and retrieve it, and it still hangs on my wall. I quit hunting shortly after that. I remember living at the base of a mountain in Arizona. This was before many of the homes currently in the area were built, about 20 years ago. There used to be a back road that is now closed due to neglect, as the county no longer maintains it. There was always a rumor of a human shrine somewhere along that road, and when I was old enough, I decided to check for myself. Sure enough, off the road behind some brush, there was a circle of chairs with a picture of someone in the middle, surrounded by strange shrine-like offerings. It was just really strange that I used to think of the creepiest things back then, and I still don't know what the purpose of that shrine was. I live in Florida, and this occurred before the black bears had a decent population. That means that the only predator that was really capable of killing a deer would be the panther. I was squirrel hunting one night and was on my way back to the house. It was pitch black, and I had a flashlight that was barely bright enough for me to walk by. All of a sudden I smelled the unmistakable smell of a carcass. I realized that I was standing in the middle of what used to be a deer that was now spread out all over the ground. Looked like it was maybe half an hour old immediately realized I was standing in the middle of a fresh kill. Felt like I was going to get mauled at any second. I somehow managed to slowly walk away. Haven't been back to that area since. My parents live on a big plot of land and the hunters and the family hunt deer and wild turkey out there during the season. My brother-in-law would go out there by himself after work a lot. One day he went out, got situated and then it hit him, he had to take a shit. So he went a ways into the woods to let it all out. It then occurs to him that he doesn't have anything to wipe with, so he reluctantly used his sock hat and buried it afterwards. Fast forward to the next day. Everyone is sitting up at the house hanging out on the patio when my dad comes up, holding the sock hat. He says I think someone's been illegally hunting on my land. He had no idea it was brother-in-law's hat. Our dog or another critter must have dug it up to investigate and my dad found it. Brother-in-law was horrified but didn't want to say anything because he always wants my dad to like him. This happened years ago, but at my birthday party last month it finally came to light that my dad was carrying and waving around Bill's shitty sock hat. I don't know if this story counts but I just like telling it. In February 2016, in Oklahoma, I heard my dog barking and growling at around 3 am. One night, I got up and went to the back door to see what she was barking at. When I did, I saw her running up and down the backyard fence line, barking, growling, and urinating all over the fence with her tail tucked in. My first thought was that there was a predator nearby, I knew something was wrong. I focused my eyes to see what she was barking at and whispered, holy s. I saw something bent over in a circle that was black and looked like it had a mane like a lion. I looked at it for about 15 seconds and decided to run to the bedroom to get my head wrapped light. I put it on my head, ran back to the back door, and saw that it was still there. I carefully turned on the light and shined it right on it. When I did that, it turned around and looked right in my direction. Then, it ran down the fence line with a smaller one in front of it. The best way I can describe it is to say that it was the size of a lion, with yellow eyes, pointed ears, huge shoulders, and a humongous chest. It ran on all fours, and this thing was so fast that it only took about two seconds to run down the entirety of the fence line. 
This wolf was way faster than my dog. I woke up my wife and told her what had just happened. I then went to the computer and googled huge wolves in America under images. I found a cartoon drawing that someone had done, and its head and mane looked just like what I saw. It was called a dog man. My mom was out in the woods, she goes by herself if she can't find anyone to go with, which I hate, and found some very clearly human hair. I think she thought it had been ripped out of the scalp? Given the woods and lake, the idea of what could have caused that were. Not good. So she called the police. They thought it sounded bad, too, but they gave her the evidence bag for some reason? She tried to back to the same spot, but either she couldn't find it, or the hair was gone. Didn't make her not want to go back. I'd think the weird man standing just outside the woods a different time who told her flat out he'd been waiting for her would. My uncle happened to be with her, thank God, and as soon as he popped out of the woods a few seconds later, the dude split. Since then, I've begged her not to go alone, but she still does. Once when we were together, some guy and his young son were poaching. It was off-season or like at least not shotgun season, being mid-spring and all, and obviously we weren't wearing bright orange because why would we? But then we're in the woods hearing gunfire, and we're like shit and have to get the F out. The dude came out and tried to make friendly conversation and my mom just glared and made pointed comments about how illegal it was to be out there with a gun that day. The dude got uncomfortable and left. This is a difficult thing for me to write down, on paper. I had no idea what a cryptid was until my son told me about his encounter, just before it aired on your show. All these years, I have thought that what I had seen was just a very deformed bear. Just so you know, I was driving that night and I never drink and drive. I was 100% sober. I haven't even talked about my encounter since it happened. Until I told my son. Since then, I have told my best friend. She encouraged me to contact you, after we listened to my son's episode together. Most evenings, just about an hour before dark, some of us enjoyed going for deer rides. We had a route we would always use. It started out on Rustic Road, which was southwest of our cabin, on Long Lake, just south of Danbury, Wisconsin. The route took us to a place that went through a wildlife preserve, and then we ended up on the road that goes from Hinckley, Minnesota to Danbury, Wisconsin. The road through the preserve always made me uncomfortable, because it was a swampy bog on both sides of the road. It was a narrow gravel road and in order to turn around, you would need to go down a very narrow drive, to a parking area for hunters. I had only been in one of those parking areas once and it creeped me out. We never saw deer on that road, so we typically went fast in that area. We would have avoided the gravel road altogether, but we always saw a deer just before the preserve and just after. On this evening, it was just my sister-in-law and I that went on the deer ride. This happened 15 or 16 years ago, so we did not have cell phones. Sometimes, we would take cameras to take pictures of deer. This night, we didn't have a camera with us. It was a hot night, and we had our windows down because the air conditioner wasn't working. I was driving a large car. A 1998 Cadillac. We had just started down that creepy road, when we noticed something black on the road, about a half a mile ahead of us. We were driving pretty fast. As we got closer, it appeared to be dark gray in color. It also appeared to have an elongated muzzle. It had its back to us, but it was a little sideways, so we could tell it was eating something in the road. I stopped the car and just kept my foot on the brake. This animal had very wide, muscular shoulders and its fur was longer than a bear's. Its ears were pointy, like a German shepherd's and stood straight up, on top of its head. This animal had hands. It was holding a dead rabbit, I think. I was talking to Amy. I said, what is that? I think I was verbalizing every thought that came into my head. I was totally freaked out. The animal noticed us. It started to turn its head. That's when I turned on my headlights. 
It wasn't dark yet, but I wanted to see this thing better. It turned and faced my car. The headlights caught its eyes. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Its eyes glowed reddish orange in the headlights. I freaked. To me, this creature was demonic in nature. Then it stood up straight, on its back legs. As this thing moved, it was jerky, like it wasn't comfortable in its own skin. It was not a natural movement. The animal sprinted at my car. It took at least six steps. I gunned my car right at it. I was in a panic. I was terrified. It turned right, still upright, then dropped to all fours. Its legs had an odd bend in them, like backward knees. I just screamed, what is that? It ran into the swamp and I got the hell out of there. We stopped on the road to our cabin. By then it was dark. When we stopped, Amy and I both cried. We couldn't stop shaking. We talked about what we had just seen. We both agreed, we would tell people we had seen a bear. To be honest, at that time, I honestly thought it was a deformed bear. Today, I know it was not. I am no longer in denial. What I saw, I cannot understand or explain. It was just plain evil in nature. So wrong. Very wrong. Some friends and I discovered a nice camping spot near Gray's and Torrey's Peaks, 214 Ers in Colorado. It seemed to be a camp frequently used by hunters, judging from its location, a well-built fire pit, and some tables nestled between trees. We had camped at this spot probably a dozen times during high school, mostly for enjoying the beautiful scenery while having some parties. One particular night, while drinking and having taken some acid, a few of us decided to embark on a late night hike. Not the best decision given our intoxicated state, but being native Coloradans, we were confident in our ability to be responsible. We started hiking further up the road we had come in on. I use the term road loosely, reaching this spot required four wheel drive and good clearance, and going past our campsite was nearly impossible without serious AT versus as we hiked about a mile up the trail or road. We stumbled upon an abandoned mining cabin, likely close to a century old. Peering inside, we were met with a sight of horror, a jumble of old, broken, and rotting furniture, rusting pots and pans, what appeared to be bloody clothes, and a decaying mattress. Additionally, an overwhelming sense of sorrow and bad vibes enveloped us. We quickly left, making our way back to the campsite. The next morning, we shared our discovery with everyone else. While intrigued, they attributed our instant fear and dread to the effects of the acid. Undeterred, we brought everyone up to the cabin that morning, and to our surprise, everyone felt the same eerie vibe. It made me reconsider returning to that particular camp spot, although I have been back since. When I was a child in Mississippi going home after a football game at school something like that chased me on a dark road. I ran to a neighbor's house. I thought it was going to kill me and I am scared of this thing today from over 45 years ago. I didn't say it was a dog man but it had the fire red eyes hiding in a cornfield and was trying to attack me. It would not come into the light and is the only thing I think that saved me. You can believe what you want. My uncles were attacked by a creature like this, dog man, going through a jungle area of Mexico, in the 70s. They were driving a big cargo truck at night when something jumped on the back of the truck. They didn't stop to see what it was because there were no lights on the road. My uncle on the passenger side saw this devilish creature that looked like a dog climbing closer to the cabin of the truck. They said the thing was huge. My uncle screaming in fear when they saw it, said they tried to shake the truck but it would fall off until they hit it against a tree on the opposite side of the road or path. They kept driving all night to the morning all freaked out. When they got to a gas station in a village they saw gash marks and hand but animal prints on the windows where it was trying to get in and on the back trailer. 
They told their story to some of the villagers or farmers and they told them that dogmen like demons roam those areas. And they were not the only ones who had been attacked before. They were so freaked out the hair on both arms rose even telling their experience. They said they never drove through Central America besides the cities or villages at night ever again. I wish I could have recorded them telling the stories. They have died already, but even before they died they stuck with what happened to them and they never did drugs. The kids and I saw some kind of creature at the edge of a field, stalking a group of deer today, right before sunset, around 7 to 8 pm. Yes, it was moving its head and ears, it was not a tree stump. We only managed to capture its attention a few times, where it turned and looked directly at us, you can see it turn its head and look over at us in the video, then immediately turned back to watching the deer. It wasn't concerned with us at all, it was completely fixated on the deer. I know it's another typical blurry picture where you can barely make out its features. It was across a large field, and this is the clearest picture our phones could get. But you can clearly see its ears an eye, the shape of its head, long arms in the front, and what looks like a mane around its neck where the hair is longer or thicker. It doesn't look like a bear to me, and there aren't any cougars around this area, at least not that I know of. This was out east from Chisago Lake, Minnesota, where a family friend of ours had a pretty terrifying encounter some years back with a creature that walked on two legs bent backward and ran across the road right in front of her vehicle. She's so traumatized by the experience she won't even talk about it. Anyways, it has taught me to keep an open mind about things. We have two encounters not far from this area actually, maybe I'll come back one day and tell those stories. But for now, I'm just looking for some feedback on what others think it might be because I have no idea, it looks pretty weird. A very good friend of mine was working on a ranch in Montana in about 1986. He was herding up some horses and went up over a hill with forest on either side with a clearing on his left. The horses were uneasy which brought him to notice something in a clearing to his left. There squatted over an animal was this huge grey, red-eyed dog thing. What really stood out to him was it had three really razor sharp long claws. The light was shining through the trees onto him and it turned and looked right at him and then turned back to eating his prey. I always believed my friend and his description is clear as day in my own mind. Never heard anyone else talk about the three claws though so that's why I always listen to other people's dog man stories. I was the primary witness, Josh at the time being 16 years old and a boy scout aiming to earn my eagle badge. My plan was to undertake a public project, and I chose to clean up the Sam Crocker Cemetery in Goodwater, Missouri. Three of my friends joined me and agreed to assist in the project. Additionally, my brother and his friend came along to be dropped off at a local creek for fishing. We all piled into my Grand Cherokee and left for the cemetery, arriving around 11.45 after dropping off my brother and his friend at the fishing spot. We started working on the project, and by around 1.30 pm, two park rangers showed up to check on us, mentioning they would be in the area. Later, one of my friends noticed something odd in a clearing near the cemetery fence, initially thinking it was a bear. He alerted me, claiming the bear was heading toward the creek. We decided to fetch my brother and his friend, and upon their agreement, we all returned to the cemetery after lunch. While retrieving my water bottle, one of my friends noticed a terrible odor, reminiscent of rotten eggs mixed with a strong stench of animal feces and urine. I also smelled it and decided to investigate. Heading down to the road, assuming it was a dead animal, I spotted a silhouette pacing back and forth in the wood line. Thinking it was a bear, I began making my way back, yelling for my friends to return to the car. It was then that I realized the creature was bipedal, not a bear. As it seemed to acknowledge being spotted, the creature dropped to all fours and started running through the cemetery. We all hurried back to the vehicle and sped away. 
In the back of the vehicle, my brother could see the creature chasing us. Looking in his rear view, I claimed it looked like an all-black German Shepherd, about the size of a small pony, with stoplight red eyes. At some point, the creature jumped onto the hood of the Jeep. I slammed on the brakes, causing it to fall off, and it stood up in front of the Jeep, staring at us. I estimated it to be about 6 feet tall, weighing 200 pounds, with jet black or brown hair covering its entire body. The redness of its eyes puzzled me. After a few minutes, the creature dropped back down to all fours, seemingly grabbing onto the back bumper. We reached the highway, where we saw the rangers. I attempted to alert them by honking and shining my lights, and at that point, the creature jumped off. We drove for another 10 minutes before turning around. Upon returning, we saw the rangers standing over something on the road. One ranger approached my vehicle, informing us that they had put down an animal and that we needed to leave, as their bosses were on their way. I agreed. While driving, we passed three park ranger trucks and a trooper moving fast. The trooper pulled me over, took our names, and mentioned a dog had been put down. I was relieved to get out of there. Six or seven days later, I received a call from the scoutmaster, who knew about the incident. He asked me to come to his house to discuss my Eagle Scout badge, and I agreed. Upon arriving, I saw a park ranger vehicle and a black suburban parked outside. Inside, I found the scoutmaster, a park ranger, and three figures in black suits, two males and a female. The female, wearing a black pantsuit, took out a clipboard and went outside. The ranger asked if the creature had damaged my vehicle, and I replied that it hadn't. The taller man stated, we're giving you this today because we know that you are trustworthy, and you cannot tell anyone what occurred that day at the cemetery. You have to let your friends know exactly what happened, that you guys saw a bear, got spooked, and left. Tell your friends the same thing we're telling you, otherwise, we will come back, we will come to your home. He then proceeded to name every person in the vehicle, seemingly issuing a threat. Shortly after this meeting, the scoutmaster and his wife moved away, and despite my attempts to locate him on social media, I was never able to find him. When I was 18 years old I was visiting a friend who lived out in the boonies. She had 20 acres of land, and horses and had no neighbors at all living around her. During the visit, I helped her with some outside chores that took almost the full day. It was around 6.30 pm, we had just finished working, she was about 50 feet away from me with another person chatting and I was looking for a good place to walk my dog. As I stood there looking at some open field with a large bluff of trees behind it my eye caught a glimpse of a dark black figure hiding behind some trees. It stood upright and seemed curious about me. I had no idea that Dog Man existed back then so my initial thought was why is someone wearing a fur costume in the middle of nowhere. I stared at it for a while as it stared at me. It had a snout like a dog, long straggly furred arms long fingered hands, I could not see its legs or a tail because of the shrubs and the tree. Now that I know about the Dog Man, I do believe that is what I witnessed that day. I remember years ago when I was about 13 running from bullies up at our woodland in Northern Ireland. I climbed an old oak tree, the only one in the forest but it had really good cover. You could not see me when I was up in it. I hid there all night long. I was that scared, but it was about 2 in the morning when I heard growling and something sniffing around the bottom of the tree. I thought at first it was a really big dog until it stood up on two legs. It was huge bigger than my father and he was touching six foot seven. It had hands with claws, not paws, and pointed ears and a long snout like a German shepherd has but only longer and its eyes glowed like looking in a mirror. Now I told a few friends and teachers what I had seen and they made fun of me even the teachers asking me if I had seen a pink elephant as well, but I knew what I saw and no one could tell me different.
On my way home from my boys' basketball practice, our headlight hit a black cloudy mist moving across the road and it turned into a large, standing up on two legs wolf. We were horrified. For months I had nightmares about this. My mind just had a hard time trying to comprehend what this thing was. As our car passed it, we got a very good look at it. The feeling of fear was so intense for weeks. It happened two miles from my house and I live in the country on Highway 72 in Bollinger County, Missouri. We didn't tell anyone but my husband because if I wouldn't have seen this, I wouldn't have believed it myself. So, my mom and I have lived in this house for eight years. My sister and dad used to live here, but they moved out after my mom and dad broke up. A woman died in our house, and my neighbor knew her. She said that the woman, Norma, had DID and other issues. She also mentioned that Norma used to wake the kids up for school, and the room where I sleep used to be hers. The reason I asked was because I had a dream about someone waking me up for school, calling me sweetheart and honey. I knew it wasn't my mom because she never uses those names with me. In the dream, I couldn't see, but I could see my body, and I couldn't move. That was the first strange occurrence. When I'm home alone, I hear people calling my name in a whisper and also saying haze. This has also happened when I was with my dad in the woods, but I knew it wasn't him. My sister mentioned that she always heard it in the woods too. When my sister and dad still lived here, I would hear someone walking up the stairs when my sister wasn't awake, and my parents never came upstairs. This still happens but only when it's late at night. My mom told me she's had sleep paralysis a lot in this house, which she never experienced before. She mentioned seeing a man in her room, and a similar experience happened to me. I was falling asleep on my chair in the living room, listening to the buzz from our heater when it turned into a flat line. I felt someone standing over me, pure white, with human body parts and very tall. I couldn't move and was scared to death. After a few minutes, he left, and I woke up, or what felt like waking up. Our kitchen is connected to our basement, and for a whole week, I convinced myself there was a man in the kitchen. I refused to go in there until a picture of him showed up in my mind. I described him to my mom, and she was freaked out. The man turned out to be her grandma's dad, who died when she was my age, and there were no photos of him. Another night, I was sleeping in my bed until I woke up to someone rubbing my thigh. I didn't open my eyes because I didn't want to see anything. He told me how lucky I was to have him as he rubbed my thigh. I quickly got up and ran to my mom, I was scared and didn't sleep in my room for a month. One morning, my mom dropped me off at school. And when she came back, our dog Emmy was outside. Emmy is well trained, and the front door was locked. When my mom checked the cameras, Emmy never went out the front door when we were leaving, she stayed on my mom's bed. In 2004, me and a friend got into his truck one evening after work. Less than a minute later, a bright, white light appeared in the sky approximately a half mile away. My friend started the engine but we sat still and watched the light just hanging there in the sky, although I didn't speak of it in the moment, I had the peculiar feeling that we were being observed just as intently. After two minutes or so, my friend began feeling unnerved by its presence when suddenly, the white ball of luminescence shot away horizontally at an impossible speed towards the town of Campton, Kentucky. My friend wanted to go home, and I needed to retrieve my car from his driveway. He put the truck in gear and we promptly drove away and didn't notice anything until we had passed through the town of Campton, Kentucky traveling north on KY-15. After passing through the town we saw the same white light had appeared above our vehicle, approximately 100 feet above us, and it was pacing along with our vehicle. My friend, whom I had known all through high school, became terrified and refused to acknowledge its presence. I found it wild and awesome. I was talking, like I was addressing the light, I know who you are. Land that ship and I'll drive it like I stole it. I, 
for some reason expected them to be able to sense on some level my thoughts and I wanted to make it very clear that I wasn't happy that they were there. It followed above us from Campton to Pine Ridge, then veered off to the left disappearing behind the hill and trees. Then when we came to our left turn onto KY 715 towards Beattyville it was hovering above the road waiting for us to catch up. I had the distinct thought or impression at where we were going. Again, I replied verbally but also projected my thoughts to it. In total, it followed above and slightly in front of our pickup for 7 or 8 miles. At Rogers, Kentucky my friend began to make his turn down the road he lived on, and that's when the large, bright, white object shot off in the direction of Beattyville, Kentucky at again, an impossible speed. I believe that I had an encounter with extraterrestrials when I was very young and the impression that I received from them, at that time, was not good. I have felt since then that these are malevolent entities who want to exploit us whenever possible. That's just the way I feel. I grew up and have lived most of my life in Islip, New York. The date was September 22, 2023 at around 2.30 am. I was lying down with my boyfriend, went to sleep at 2 am, and woke up and could see the time was 2.30 am, but I was paralyzed, and couldn't move. I tried to scream his name for help because I saw four grey aliens standing near me but could not make a sound. This was not my first encounter with these beings. They were a little different than the average greys that I have experienced in the past. Their eyes were emanating dim light as if they were some kind of contact lenses to see at night. They were looking at each other. Communicating without words. One looked at me then they all turned and quickly the one closest to me stabbed my womanhood, for lack of better words, and it felt like the needle wand looking thing went deep into me. The pain was like an excruciating burn and I screamed in my head until I went unconscious. I woke up at 4 am. So did my boyfriend. He told me he was paralyzed and tried to talk to me but found he could not. Two months followed with random 30 minute episodes of lingering pain from there to my spine. I believe that they've been touching me since childhood, I used to wake up with strange marks on my back. The last time previous to this incident was almost a decade ago. I'm scared that they have found me again. I was in southern New Mexico at the time. The date was August 14, 2008 at exactly 12.03 am. I saw a white creature that looked like a bald baboon. It had large almond-shaped eyes and it was squatting at the edge of Interstate 10. I slowed the vehicle to see just what I was looking at. The creature stood up on two legs and turned and looked. I saw it had spikes running down its back. They almost looked like the hair of baboons but thicker and more elongated. I could see its hands and they were primate-like. The face had the look of a baboon as well. I didn't have time to stop because I had to make a delivery at home. When we made it to San Diego, California. I met up with the other drivers at the port. And we flew home. Four days later we had a return trip on another delivery. This time in this same area. I witnessed the men in black. A lot of them with their black vans covered with antennas and some devices. I would not know how to describe it. The vans were unmarked and looking for something in that area. I counted 24 vans and one on the edge of the road. I saw some black OP choppers flying around in circles in the area. They were definitely looking for something on the ground. Might be the creature I saw? I'm a retired US Army captain. I served for 12 years including my last 6 years under the 7th Infantry Division, Fort Lewis MC Cord, Washington. I'm going to make this short but to the point. On many night trainings we'd load up for night OPS in the woods on the southeast part of the Fort Lewis base. During the training, we would encounter these creatures, Bigfoot, quite often. We know they're there. We're told not to engage them in any way. I know back a few years ago a couple of enlisted troops got scared and emptied a few clips into a large male creature. Yes, they killed it. 
Within two hours we had feds crawling all over the place. They left after talking with the two guys who killed the creature. They left in a large vehicle that was loaded down. Yes, these creatures exist. Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Grassman, etc. After speaking with a few fellow army officers I've met they too have encountered some of these creatures on other bases. I was working alone at night in a flooring store when two black-eyed kids, the boy looked about 5 or 6 and the girl looked about girl 11 or 12 years old, accompanied by a blue-eyed woman, came into my store. Long story short, the youngest asked to use our restroom and I said, sure, it's right over there. The woman quickly interrupted and said, no, we are leaving. They left without incident and I never felt scared or in danger. I was undoubtedly uneasy though because of their different appearance. The kid's eyes were completely black and looked to be made out of a tar substance, while the woman was very tall with large blue eyes and actually extremely pretty. I've never heard another story with the two black-eyed kids being with a woman before here, and I've looked. And through research the thing that made the most sense in my situation was ancient eastern beliefs say that BEKs are bringers of bad fortune. This adds up in my situation even though everything could still be a coincidence. Other interesting notes from my encounter are when the young boy spoke I couldn't understand a thing he said, he was between 5 and 6 remember, and the girl had to tell me what he said, which was to use our restroom. And even though it sounds completely fabricated, I was reading user submitted stories that had a few stories of BEKs in the weeks leading up to my encounter. I always knew that was a super weird coincidence but only recently I've been hearing that reading or thinking about them which might draw them to you. The woman gave me a much weirder feeling than the Bex did, not bad feelings but weird. She was actually very pretty and nice. I never hear about the Bex being with a fairly normal person in other stories. But I honestly don't think they were aliens even though I have no idea what they were. Just my opinion. This incident happened in 2007, on the 4th of July. I had the day off and was hanging out at my neighbor's house, who lived across the street. It was extremely hot, roughly 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and humid here in Laredo, Texas. I practically never wear shorts, but I had to that day. To set the scene, this was a residential neighborhood of single-family homes and duplexes in the central city. At some point in the early afternoon, we noticed a person walking down the sidewalk. He was a tall, very broad-shouldered, dark-complected black man with a shaved head. What was bizarre was how he was dressed. Again, I have to emphasize how hot it was. He was wearing a set of military-style BDUs, battle dress uniform, aka fatigues. These are usually camouflage, but his garb was black like police SWAT teams often wear. I recall him also wearing black combat boots. The BDUs had no visible patches or insignia. Over the BDUs, he wore a heavy, black leather full-length coat. I recall him wearing sunglasses. He seemed to come out of nowhere, walk past everyone, and continue until he turned a corner and we couldn't see him anymore. He had a demeanor of being very focused, very on a mission. I was concerned at the time that he was wearing the coat to conceal a shotgun or assault rifle, but to the very best of my knowledge, no crimes were committed in the area that day. Even though we remained outside for hours, he didn't return. None of us had seen him before or seen him again, this is unusual because we generally had at least a visual familiarity with virtually everyone in the immediate neighborhood. There is nothing necessarily paranormal at all in this incident. However, I have always found it extremely weird and felt that if there are time travelers or dimension travelers, he was one of them. When I was a kid, probably eight or so, my brother and our parents traveled from Mississippi to California. My aunt and uncle came to us in a car and them in an RV. We stopped somewhere in west central Texas for the night and all slept in the RV. 
sometime in the middle of the night, everyone was sleeping, and I woke up feeling strange. I sat up and looked out the window and saw, I really don't know what I saw, what appeared to be men walking on two feet but they had fur and almost looked like wolves. As a late teen, I lived in Lincoln County, Mississippi. I went to a friend's for the weekend who lived way out of town, down a gravel road with two houses and an old still that belonged to my friend's family. So of course around midnight we snuck out and walked to the still about half a mile away. Now we were scared we would get caught so we did not stay long at all, definitely not long enough for alcohol to cloud our judgment. On the way back, we got maybe 20 yards from her driveway, one side of the road was heavily wooded and the other had scattered trees and high grass, we heard something moving in the grass and almost simultaneously stopped and turned in that direction. Next was a growl that scared me worse than I'd ever been and have not felt again to this day. We both took off running not daring to look back because we could hear it. We made it inside and never said a word to each other till the next day. We just sat staring at each other. My brother-in-law and his wife live next door to us. There's probably 200 yards between our houses and a slim wood line that we cleared a small trail through to go back and forth. At the time my son was 10. He and I rode over there on the four-wheeler for something and returned home shortly after. I pulled into the carport, at the back of the house, and my son hopped off the bike first, he said, Mom, what is that? Pointing towards the wood line we had just come through. When I turned, there was something very tall with hair over its entire body walking that wood line. It moved kinda slow and very smooth. I remember thinking it looked almost like it was floating it moved so smoothly, but it was walking. I could clearly see that. We got my brother-in-law and all of us drove to the back of the property but found nothing. This one didn't scare me as much as the others, it more amazed me because I was like I knew it not many believe me but I still tell the story. I often wonder if all of us have been abducted at one time or another but only a few of us can remember. I had an odd experience as a child but I cannot say I was ever abducted. When I was 10 years old we lived in a small home in a Hamilton, Ontario neighborhood. We had the windows open in the house as air conditioners were not common in 1968. It was very hot that night. I shared a room with my brother and sister. I woke up during the night and looked out the window into the backyard and in front of a bush about 8 feet away was a small thin creature with shiny black skin. It looked like a small girl but at the same time, it kind of looked like an insect. It was crouched on its legs and was leaning forward with one hand on the ground and was looking at me. It had what looked like thin antennas or needles sticking out from each side of its head and one on top. That's all I remember and when I told my mom she said it was a dream. We moved to Caledonia, Ontario to a large house in 1972. I now slept in my own room on the second floor. My dad and I did a project where we made a crystal radio. Some people may remember this kit from Radio Shack. I woke up one night in the summer with the windows open and I looked down into the backyard. I saw the antenna for my radio stretched across the yard but below it was the same female-like insectoid again on the edge of the grass crouched down next to the patio under my window. Again my mother said it was a dream. A few years later we moved again so my dad did not have to go far for work to Stony Creek, Ontario. I was now about 16 years old and I got up in the night and looked out my window and saw it again crouched on the edge of the sidewalk and on the grass in the front of the house. This time I went outside to look and it was there. I walked to the sidewalk and it did not make any noise. It just looked at me. It was all black with large black eyes. I then remember waking up and don't remember going back inside. I wrote it off as a dream. Many years later, I am not sure these were just dreams. There was an article where a UFO crashed in Mexico and the sketches the people made looked like my dream creature without the antenna and the pictures showed red eyes not black. The red eyes may just have been to jazz up the story. Makes me think though. Anyone else have anything like this one?
It was 1980. I'm 21, then living about 30 miles as the crow flies from where I had my first encounter, Brewster Lake, British Columbia. This was a Saturday afternoon in early March, a bright clear sunny day with snow melting. Almost felt like it was spring. I was watering some cows. I had two five-gallon pails and was filling them from the outside top of the house trailer I was renting. So I had one of the pails hanging off the tap while it filled. It was facing the side wall of the trailer monitoring the progress. There was a distance of about three feet between me and the trailer wall in front of me. I don't know why but I suddenly, for no reason at all, moved my gaze up to the roof of the trailer about 15 feet over to my left. I watched for about 10 seconds before this thing came into view exactly where I was looking, floating over the roof, moving down and over along the wall to stop directly in front of me, between me and the trailer at chin height. Without moving my feet, I could have easily leaned forward and touched it with my nose. It was literally 8 to 10 inches from my face. It was round and the size of a large cantaloupe but it had no outside structure, mostly translucent. You could see through it but not clearly except the small center which was about half the size of a dime. It was like a little light but didn't shine. It looked really dense. That part seemed to almost be solid. It was white and I couldn't see through it. Radiating out from the center were evenly spaced colored pieces about the diameter of something that moved from the center spot out to the edge where it disappeared and then repeated. It didn't move fast, about 3 seconds to move from the dense center to where it stopped it almost looked like it was moving along a clear straw because it moved in a straight line. It reminded me of a sparkler only moving much slower than the sparks do. The sound it made was very soft like a buzz. It reminded me of the fizzy sound you hear when you open a carbonated beverage. It stayed there stationary for about 40 seconds then it slowed, then it slowly moved to my right picking up speed. It looped out from the wall and up, shot over the roof, and was gone. The whole time I never spoke or touched it. I just admired it. It was beautiful, unlike anything I'd ever seen or been taught to believe even existed here on earth. Clearly some kind of intelligent life form that is not carbon based. I never told anyone about it until one day I shared it with my one son and two teenage grandsons. They didn't know what to think of it because I was serious and they knew I was not a liar. It just sounds so outrageous. I know now that it was an orb. My next experience came about 10 years later in 1990 and I'm now living in one province over in northern Alberta. I was working for an oil company west of Grand Prairie. This day I was out and it was about 3.30 in the afternoon. I was working my way out of the bush towards the end of the day and right where the road joined Highway 40, there was a blue pickup sitting off the road by about 20 feet near where the ditch edged the brush. I came around the corner and drove past the truck to turn north on Highway 40. I remember saying to myself, out loud, holy crap, look at the size of that black dude. There leaning over the far side of the truck box of the blue pickup, was a huge black guy. He's absolutely 100% focused on me and staring at me, maybe even more like glaring at me, not moving at all, just watching me as I drove by. It kind of intimidated me because there were not many African Americans living in northern Alberta at that time and I was mindful of being respectful to others and not staring at people who were different. The being had midnight black hair and skin but the face of a man. It was covered in thick black hair except for the face. I thought at first he was wearing black coveralls and I wondered with all of the push for high visibility clothing in the oil patch where he had managed to find pitch black coveralls. The whole thing really bothered me because the top of the truck box had toolboxes mounted on the box rails which on Dodge trucks were about the top shoulder height for me and I'm just over 6 feet tall. The truck looked like one of those older type Toyota or Datsun trucks because the top of the toolboxes only came up to his belly and he was leaning with his elbows on top of the toolboxes never taking his eyes off of me. I looked at my side mirror as I passed him and I saw that the black, what I thought were coveralls, went right to the soles of the feet. That's when I realized this was not a man. When I passed by, he stopped staring at me and went back to his business. 
He leaned over the side of the truck toolbox and started grabbing stuff from the floor of the truck box and pitching it over his shoulders onto the ground using one hand, then the other, just emptying the contents of the floor of the truck box. I thought to myself it must be a bear what else could it be. I kind of laughed a bit thinking about how pissed the owner of the truck was going to be when he came back to this mess. But the thing that really bothered me was its face was like a human's and the way it was so focused on me driving by. I was noodling on it and got about 10 minutes down the road when it occurred to me it couldn't have been a bear because bears don't have opposing thumbs. How is it picking up stuff from the truck box pitching it out in the ditch one-handed if it didn't have an opposing thumb? Impossible to think of perspective, how it stood up to and towered over that ram three-quarters ton truck. This thing had to be nine feet tall. I don't remember ever telling anyone about this experience. Needless to say, I've always been very open-minded and accepting of what some call myths or old wives' tales. There is so much going on around us that we have no understanding of only those mesmerized or should I say oblivious believe the mainstream narratives. I, 15 male, live at home with my mother and sister in a house constructed at least before halfway through the 20th century. However, we can't be entirely sure of the true date, as not many details exist about the home. Despite the lack of details, many photos of the house exist, and I have found a few of them hung up in the doctor's surgery and dentist nearby. Just a little background knowledge, this house was once home to an elderly, practically bed-bound man who lived solely upstairs in my sister's room. The closet in the room was turned into a bathroom but was converted back into a closet after he passed, and my parents purchased the house. He died in that room, and it seems he can't pass over. Ever since I was young, a lot of weird, unexplainable incidents have happened in the house. I'll try to list what happened over the years. The first one I can remember, from my own memory, was playing in my living room with a plastic TIE fighter. I was sitting on the ground when suddenly it flew out of my hand and slammed to the other side of the room. I immediately ran out of the room to be consoled by my mom, yet the idea that something could just fly out of my grasp without anyone else in the room was hard to comprehend. This is getting kinda long, so I'll get to the worst one that my mom actually experienced. My mom works from home downstairs in the kitchen, and to reach upstairs, she would have to get up, walk for 5 seconds, then walk up the stairs for 10, turn to the right, and enter my sister's door to her room. One day, my mom was working from home and just got off a call with a client when she was called by my sister, Mom. Mom. Come upstairs and see. To which my mom replied, I'm working, you come see me. She kept calling my mom and she kept replying to just come down. It was after 30 or so seconds that my mom realized my sister was at school and that she was home alone. The calling stopped once she stopped replying, and she continued work, feeling very creeped out. If this post gets any attention, I have way more weird stories for next time. Back when I was 18 female working in a fancy hotel, the maintenance man 25 LM was handsome hardworking and funny. Over time we created a friendship and I found myself comfortable around his presence after a few months he asked me out on a date. We ended up going for dinner and then for some drinks. I asked him what his last name was, and he replied it was white. I thought nothing of this and we moved on. The next day at work I noticed that his name tag actually revealed his last name was Morris and I never questioned this to him but immediately found this to be very strange. When I got home I told my mom who immediately said red flag. A few hours later she comes up to my room with panic saying that the very man I went on a date with had beat someone to death when he was 17, he bullied and chased the younger victim to a dead end where he acted out a prolonged and viscous attack that was so severe that the victim had to have a closed coffin. My mom is an avid investigator when it comes to these things, we never went out again but I did have to see him at work which made it very awkward. A few years ago a friend of mine from school also stabbed a man to death, 
and another friend punched someone in the face and they died as a result of injury. I'll start this by describing things, when I'm in the car with my brothers, and our mom pulls into the driveway of our grandmother's house, to check on her due to recent concerns. She hadn't been answering anyone and it had people worried. Now, here are the parts that made it feel closer to a horror film. Well, I should say the normal things first, so you can see the horror vibes truly. She had hundreds, thousands of broken nut shells on her front porch, there was none now. She always has lights on in her house after dark, and you know what? Pitch black, no lights through any blinds. It seemed odd. We pull in, and this pit of dread just appears in my stomach, and a sour feeling just fills my mouth. Then, my mom turns the radio down and tells us to stay in the car, cool, wasn't going in anyway. Too damn creepy, and goes to the door and tries the screen door. It's locked. No big deal, she knocks on the door like an officer. The inner door opens too damn quickly, as though she had just been behind the door waiting. I got chills. Our grandmother looked inches taller, creepy. My mom goes in, and the door closes behind her, and this pit had instantly evolved into a feeling of worse dread. My brother and I shared a look as we got the same chills. That house felt evil. That's the best way I could put it. Now, after a few minutes of mentally wanting her to get the hell out of there, she storms out and gets in the car and we pull out. The next few minutes down the road were tense, she seemed mad. Annoyed? That's what we thought she was, anyway. Then, she starts crying. Now we're confused as hell, so we're asking if something happened. Hell. She starts to tell us about what happened. No lights were on in the house, none. Our grandmother goes through the archway, in the dark, with no problems. Mind you she has bad hips and she's clumsy. Not grabbing the rails on the wall for help, nor did my mom smell any cat urine. Her house has three cats, and a litter box that is difficult to clean, so it should smell, it always does, but, no. My mom smells. Floral scents like lily and lilac and a bit of lavender. Everywhere. Then, my grandmother stands in the middle of the living room with her arms neatly together, in the damn darkness, while my mom tries to turn on a light, but you know what? The light bulbs were taken out. She couldn't have removed them without help. The floral scent got worse the closer she got to her, and the room was stuffy, hot, and dark. Our grandmother didn't want any lights on. The couch was against the heater and the heater wasn't even on. The blanket on the couch was neatly folded like it hadn't been used. Any signs of cats were gone. My mom said there was this heavy weight on her chest, like someone was pushing her chest in. The way she spoke was wrong. She called our mom dear not sweetie, or honey, but dear. And my mom went to give her a goodbye hug, and this is where it gets worse. My mom is taller than her, so she has her arms over my grandmother's, naturally, but this time when my mom hugged her, she was shorter than my grandmother. And she said that she looked younger like there were fewer wrinkles in age, and that it felt like she was hugging a stranger. Bear in mind these next details. My grandmother has been collecting these blue glass things, pretty little things when there isn't dust on them, and these prized things were now in a box, broken and the box was shoved against a wall. The next thing was that she only had a tooth. But, when she talked, my mom said there was a full set of teeth. Mind you she doesn't have money to get teeth. When my mom practically fled the house, my grandmother just watched us leave in the darkness, still acting possessed as hell. Now, I knew she had been getting worse with her demental lately, but what? The. F. That shit makes you forget everything over time. Not gain height, or teeth, pull every light bulb out, and look 30 years younger. For the love of holy horror movies, help this make sense. I also couldn't add two flares, so ya. Yeah. This happened to me a few years ago, 
Probably back in 2017 when I was 14. I still think about this encounter almost every day. My dad lives near a small lake in Wisconsin, there are only about a hundred people who live in the neighborhood. My brother and I spent every other weekend up there so we knew pretty much everyone. My dad's house was the second house to the top of this large hill, at the very top is a gas station and the diner where I would work over the summer, at the bottom of the hill was the lake and a small beach. That morning I was waitressing at the diner and at the end of my shift I bought a slushie from the gas station and was planning on going down to the beach for the afternoon. Parked outside the diner was a gorgeous teal vintage car. I'm not sure what brand I'm not good with that stuff, but it seemed to be from the 60s, and it caught my eye. There was an older man in the driver's seat and his wife in the passenger seat. They had their windows up and I wasn't too close so I didn't get a great look at them but I did notice they were looking at me. I didn't think anything of it and started walking home. On my walk home I remember wondering where they could be from. We don't get many tourists and I would have remembered if someone drove a car like that. The diner was off of a pretty quiet highway and it was rarely used by out-of-towners but I assumed they were just driving through. My younger brother and I went to the beach that afternoon and hung out for a few hours. When we decided to head home I packed up my stuff probably a minute before he did and started walking home before him. On the walk up the hill there was probably half a city block's distance between us. He could clearly see me, but we were too far to talk. I heard a car coming towards me and looked back and moved to the side of the street. It's the car I saw earlier at the diner. They slow down as they approach me and I start to get nervous. The woman in the passenger seat rolls down her window and I nearly shit my pants. They both seem to be wearing hyper-realistic latex face masks. There seemed to be no beginning and no end to the mask, there weren't noticeable holes for eyes, yet their eyes definitely seemed real, and there was no seam at the edge of the neck. If they were wearing masks they were some of the best masks I've ever seen and must have cost a fortune but it definitely wasn't their skin. There's no way. Something about them was so. Off. The woman asked me for directions to a highway I've never heard of, I didn't drive yet so this in itself wasn't weird, but I pointed them to the highway by the diner that leads out of town. They thanked me, rolled up the window, and drove away. I ran to my brother and told him what happened and he said they looked pretty normal when they drove past him but they looked normal to me that morning as well. The masks were too good, you had to be close enough to notice how strange they looked. There was just something so unsettling about them. They didn't really do anything odd except asking a girl who was clearly too young to drive for directions, but it was a very small community, I might have been the first person they had seen in hours, it was just the way they looked. I'd never seen anything like it and I haven't seen anything like it since then. I mentioned it to my dad when I got home but he didn't have much to say about it. I still feel deeply unnerved when I think about it, more than six years later. I don't believe in much of the paranormal stuff and I do think they were human. But why the masks? What were they doing there? And why ask a child who is obviously too young to drive for directions to a highway? Has anyone ever experienced something like this before? Fall 2022, I spent the night at a friend's house in their second floor spare room before a road trip. We were aiming to be on the road at 4 am. And I had fallen asleep around 10 pm. I was sober. For context, when I have to be up early for something important like a job interview, first day of work, flight, etc., I do not sleep well. I am prone to waking up at all hours paranoid that I have somehow missed my alarm. So it wasn't unusual that I suddenly woke up and worriedly looked at my phone thinking I overslept. I felt better after seeing the time, 2.31 am, and nestled back into bed. I was still alert for the next few minutes from the anxiety or adrenaline of being potentially late and was trying to will myself back to sleep with my eyes shut. Then I felt the bed sink down by my feet. I was on my side in the fetal position facing away from the door. It felt like the weight of a person was sitting in the crook of my knees. 
I always thought I would keep a level head with a ghostly encounter because the idea has always excited me, but turns out I was terrified lol. My heart started pounding and I kept my eyes closed because the hallway light was on and I did not want to see any kind of shadow, not a damn thing. I stayed like that until I eventually drifted off to sleep. I also kept this experience to myself so I wouldn't freak my friend out or have her husband make fun of me. Until a few weeks later at her Oktoberfest party when I drunkenly spilled the beans thinking they would think it was a funny story. Immediately, she shouted, I knew it. And ran to get sage and start smudging the house. She explained she sometimes heard work boots stomping around upstairs while she was working from home but didn't want to believe it. We started laughing hysterically while she's saging and her husband is rolling his eyes and laughing, and after we settle down we go to bed like normal, me in the spare room. Nothing happened in the spare room that night. The next morning over. Coffee she mentioned that the man who built the house in the 50s died on the property, something like a heart attack while he was mowing the lawn, and that she would like to think he's just checking to make sure they are taking good care of it. She lives in another state so I don't see her often but I know they've started some construction and I'm a little paranoid about what, if anything, will happen the next time I stay over. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.